Now I've realized I need a new chemise and I've made enough garments like this that I feel confident enough to make this into a tutorial. So I will uh, list all the calculations I use down below. Um, and I only have this very small piece of linen in my stash so I need to be quite economical but that's not a bad thing. And towards the end of the video I will show you uh, various ways you can tweak the pattern and uh, make a large variety of beautiful things from a variety of periods as well. There's a number of beautiful shifts in museum collections around the world, like this one. Uh, it's a French-American linen chemise. It's a bit too modern for us. It was worn around 1820 and it's at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. Or we've got this one, also from Boston. Um, this is also American and linen. It's late 18th to early 19th century, so closer to our date. And it's got these nice little ruffles on the sleeves. I'm not going to do the sleeves like this one, but this is my main inspiration when it comes to length and shape. It's from England. Uh, it's a linen. It's 1730 to 60, so very right for our date. And it can be found at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. So first of all, you need two uh, rectangles. They need to be as long as you want your chemise to be from your shoulder to your hem, and as wide as half your chest or stomach width, whichever is the widest. Uh, and uh, plus a little extra for ease and seam allowance. Then you need these two tiny little squares, 10 by 10 centimeters for underarm gauze. And these cuffs, if you want that, they are 10 centimeters uh, wide and as long as my elbow circumference. And then I cut these narrow linen strips uh, to use for uh, the ruffles so around the sleeves and the uh, I actually ended up not using them, I'll talk more about that towards the end of the film. Then you need two smaller rectangles for the sleeves. They need to be as long as you want your sleeves to be and as wide as your overarm circumference. Finally you're gonna need some side gauze. I just took what was left of fabric underneath the sleeves and folded it in half and then cut it diagonally. So I have one side gore that's in one piece and one that will need piecing. But piecing spirit! Listen to Bernadette Banner. Also, as you can see, all the pieces are either square, rectangular or triangular. So this is a very basic pattern. It's been used throughout history. When I'm working with linen, I like to use what's called uh, the drawn thread method. And it's basically, you basically just take a pin or a needle and you pick out um, a thread from the weave of the fabric. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to get hold of, uh, depends on, on your fabric very much. But when you get it, you basically just tug at it, like you're pulling a drawstring, and uh, it marks the fabric, uh, gives you a line that's straight on the grain, makes it very easy to cut straight. And when the thread breaks, like this, you just um, find where it broke and pick it up again. Just make sure you pick up the right thread and not the one next to it. You want good light for this. This can be a bit fiddly and uh, it can take some time, but you get really nice, crisp, straight edges like this and it prevents warping later. And this is a garment that I will have to launder quite often because it's next to my skin. And this is what you end up with, a sort of open line in the weave, straight on the grain. And as you can see, even though I measured quite carefully with my ruler, I'm fairly far off, so, but that's not, no worries, you can still use that mark as a guide to pick up more threads. And when you're done, you just use that sort of open line as a guide, and you cut 
And this, of course, is a lot easier if you're not holding your fabric up to the camera while you're cutting it. But um, you get the idea. The next thing I'm going to do is measure how I want my uh, neckline to go. So first I'm measuring how wide I want it to be from my clavicle out to my shoulder, memorizing that number because writing down things are for wusses. And then you're measuring down from your shoulder down to how deep you want your neckline to be. Now I've taken the front of my chemise and I just folded it in half and I'm using my ruler to mark up where I want uh, the neckline to go. My, I want my neckline to be uh, 15 centimeters wide and 20 centimeters deep. But I don't want it to be square, so I'm using this. This is called the French ruler, uh, although I like to refer to it as my uh, parrot ruler. Uh, and you just place it along the lines to give that nice curve. But if you don't have a French ruler, you can use a plate or a saucer or a big teacup or something else that gives you that nice curved edge. And repeating on the back side. You want the width to be the same on the front and back, but I wanted my back to be a bit higher than the front. And again with my parrot, or my French ruler. Just making that nice curve. The first thing you need to do is to sew your shoulder seams. Do not sew where the neckline, the neck opening is going to be. That's a waste of time. You're going to cut that away anyway. But you want to sew the shoulder seams. Um, I'm going to make a, a video with stitches uh, very soon. But I've just flat felt these to make them comfortable on the skin. Next, you attach your sleeves, making it all look like a big cross. The middle of the sleeve to the middle of the shoulder. And uh, here again, I've, I've flat felled my seams. Oops, not exactly steady cam. I flat felled my seams to make them comfortable. Now, the next bit is a bit fiddly. It's maybe the most difficult part. It's inserting these underarm gores. And there's two ways of doing it. You can either sew the little square to the sleeve and the side of the chemise on one side, then fold it over, and uh, with the square attached to what's now the underside, you just fold it over and sew it to the sleeve and the side on the other side. However, there's another way of doing this and it's a lot of people find this less fiddly and tricky and the way you do this is you cut, you fold your square gore in half and you cut it from point to point, corner to corner. And now instead of one gore, that square, you have two smaller triangular gores, which means you can insert one of them to one side, the other to the other side, without folding or, or messing about with it. And when they're attached to both sides, you fold the sleeve and you sew them together along that long diagonal line there. I'm going to show it. First I'm going to show the standard non-pieced gore. I'm using a back stitch to attach it because it's a very strong and elastic stitch and you're going to need it here because you get a lot of stress on the underarms. That's why we need the gore so we can lift our arms without breaking our, our chemise. A lot of people find the points the most tricky and uh, I agree but I think they're mo much more tricky uh, and fiddly on the machine actually. Uh, 
when you do them by hand you have it's so much slower and you have so much more control and I'm going to show you how I do it I've marked my seam allowances in pencil so you can see them instead of just white linen on white linen and when I get to the corner you see I'm only stitching through the gore and the one side the one piece I'm stitching the gore to I'm going up straight in the middle right where the two seam allowances meet and then I'm folding that fabric to the side so instead of stitching into what was the sleeve I'm now stitching into the body of the chemise and I'm, I'm matching up the shoulder seam there you can see and uh, that done removing some pins that done you just keep on back stitching and this gives a very nice clean crisp corners and as you can see they will lie flat and they will fold beautifully now I've sewn them to one side I fold them over, I'm, I'm stitching, I'm, I'm pinning and stitching them to the underarm uh, space on the other side. And doing the corners the same way, making sure you're only catching two layers of fabric, not three. That will make for a very bulky seam. It will make it not look very nice and it will also make it a lot less comfortable. And comfort is key when you're making underwear. Still with the back stitching. Now it's all done and as you can see it's fairly flat and, and nice and crisp and what's of wrinkles on all four sides. You can, you can iron out pretty easily. Now for the other method, I've cut my gore in half and I'm just pinning one of my halves to, this is the, the sleeve seam or the sleeve. Uh, and the bodice on the other side and before you start sewing just make sure you leave uh, a seam allowance I used one centimeter that you're not stitching into that will make uh, sewing the two uh, gauze, gore pieces together very tricky I'm starting from where you marked still back stitching Now both of them are sewn in place under each side of the arm and I've folded the arm over, folded the sleeve over I should say, and then you just sew them together along that long diagonal line using a back stitch again. With that gore finished. It looks like this. It's the body, sleeve, sleeve, body, and the gore in the middle. And now I'm going to fell my seams. The way I do that is I cut away half of the seam allowance on, on one of the sides, and then I fold the now bigger seam allowance over the shorter and the down encasing all the raw edges just pinning that down and uh, stitching just picking up one or two threads from the fabric but making a bigger stitch in the seam allowance just stitching it down making sure it 
stays flat and nice and comfortable. And I use the same method on the non-pieced gore. As you can see, I'm folding my, my seam allowances outwards. And this is the end result. As you can see, they're quite nice and flat and uh, neat, even this one that's been pieced. And I think it will be quite comfortable and uh, not any less comfortable than this one that's not been pieced. Very happy with that. Now we want to finish the sleeves. So from the point of the underarm gussets, you want to backstitch down the sleeve almost down to the end, stuffing a few centimeters before you reach the hem of the sleeve, and just hemming that slit using the same stitch that we used before. I like to make a couple of uh, buttonhole stitches or whip stitches at the, uh, the end there just to strengthen it a bit. And when you're done, your sleeve will look something like this from the underarm gusset down the sleeve seam and to the split. Now I'm drawing threads again. Um, this is a method for making very pretty gathers of fabric. And I'm drawing two threads, uh, about half a centimeter between, or maybe one centimeter, I can't remember. And the way you do this is you sew rows, two rows of very neat, even basting stitches along those lines we've created, which will give you some very nice gathering threads, which will make it easier to gather the chemise sleeves into this. This is a cuff, and the first thing we do is we fold it in half, just to, to give us some creases that we can work with. As you can see, I'm not pressing it with an iron, uh, or anything. I'm just pressing it with my hands. That's the beauty of linen. It creases really easily. And of course also the curse of linen. Uh, it creases really easily. Then you fold it back out and you fold the raw edges in on itself towards that middle crease. We might not actually end up using all these creases, but they will give us guide. They're, they'll act as guidelines which is very handy. There we go. Now you fold it in half lengthwise and we're actually going to mark this crease with a pin. And this is something we do to make it easier to know uh, how much fabric we should gather into what part of the cuff. We're just making some tiny little hems here. You can see, just again, pressing with my fingers and my nails. That's enough with linen. And then you fold that hem in towards that first pin we put in. And mark that new crease with a new pin. Do the same on the hem of the sleeves as well. So we end up with three pins marking right sides together, match the pins together. It's really important that you do this right sides together. So the outside of your sleeve towards the outside of your cuff. Make sure the hems align perfectly. This is why we made that little hem, uh, that little fold in. And 
now you can just pull on your gathering threads and having done that you can start spacing out your gathers distributing them evenly uh, on the cuff and pinning them in place I didn't actually have a lot of fabric to gather in the end To secure your gathering threads, you can wind them around a pin like this. And then you just sew them in place. And this is a very good method if you have a lot of fabric that you need to gather down. It will look very neat and very elegant. Having done that, you fold your cuff out. and. Uh, using those uh, those creases we made, those guidelines, making sure everything is neat and lying where it should. You fold the raw edge of your cuff in and then once more to hide all the raw edges. And stitch in place. It's the same stitch we've used so much. It's one of my favorites and I will definitely made a, make a video on stitches soon. You can keep this opening um, if you like uh, and use it as a drawstring casing for the ribbon you need to close your sleeve with but I chose to slip stitches it uh, closed and make eyelet holes instead. The eyelet holes are made uh, using an awl. This is my awl. As well as, a, I, I call this a preen, a bone preen. I've marked where I want them to go and uh, I just push my awl through in between the, the fibers, the, the threads of my fabric. The trick is to make a hole without actually breaking any threads, that way you get a very strong lacing hole. So I'm just wiggling my awl a bit, making that hole bigger. And you can see it can be quite forceful with it. It's quite strong stuff linen. Then I take my preen and I push it through. Um, it sometimes needs a little help. You can see I need to sort of coax the, the threads aside with my nails, but we're getting there. And when I'm through, I'm actually pushing this down on the preen. Again, fairly hardy stuff linen. Now, to make sure this doesn't close on itself, and it will if you leave it to its own devices, I'm just quickly whip stitching a few, eight or ten stitches around it. And this is enough if you want to, but I want to make it pretty, so I'm going to go back in with my preen, make the hole nice and round again, and then go back around and make lots and lots of tiny whip stitches, just to make it pretty. Having done that, I'm once again going in with my awl, no, oh, sorry, with my preen, and just pushing through, making that hole nice and round. Like that. Now you just need to repeat it on both sides of both cups, and your sleeves are done. Next. We're going to move on to the side gauze. Now, for the one, the gore that's split in two, there's two ways of attaching it. You can either sew that long straight side of the gore, uh, of one of the gores, to the back side seam of the, of the chemise, and then stitch the long straight side of the other gore piece to the front side seam of the chemise and then finally sewing that long diagonal line but we're not going to do that I'm going to show you a different method and this way you can insert both the pieced and the unpieced gore the same way and we're going to do that by starting with the diagonal uh, seam we're going to sew the two uh, 
gold pieces together. I'm using a running back stitch, which is basically it's basically just a running stitch that I secure with a back stitch every every now and again. But I'm gonna switch to a back stitch when I get to the top because it might have to take some stress there and I want to use a stronger stitch that's more elastic. So all the way to the top, cut some seam allowance, fold over and uh, stitch down like we've done before. And from now on we can treat this as one piece and uh, the same way as we would the unpieced piece. Stitch one long side of your gore to one side of your chemise side seam using your running back stitch, changing to a back stitch when you get to the top, but don't stitch all the way to the top. Leave a little seam allowance when you get close to that mid seam. Do you see? Now, chances are between your underarm gore here on the left and your side gore here on the right, you have a little piece of side seam that's not closed. So we're going to do that now. And the important thing to remember is to make sure you don't catch that seam allowance from the tip of the side gore. So you fold that back, fold it in on itself. You're gonna get, get back to that, so don't worry. Whoop. But you're gonna to want to mark it when you get to where the, uh, the top of the side gore starts. Just mark that with a pin but making sure you only hit, uh, that you only go through the side seams and not through the gore itself. And from now on, you want to pin the side of the chemise with the gore and the gore only. Again, remember, only pinning two layers. Backstitch down from the underarm gore to where you meet the side gore and when you get here you do the same as you did on the corners of the underarm gore making sure that you go through only two layers at the time only two layers at the time you're going down making sure you're only going through those two layers and then when you go back you go through the layer that's closest to you and then through the tip of the side gore. And this way you will have a very neat gore and you can start just backstitching and then changing to a running backstitch when you get a bit down. This is going to make for a very neat and beautiful gore. So this is what we have now. We have sewn the underarm seam and we have sewn the gore and we now need to fell the seams and I fell them outwards here as well not just on the underarm gore. First we're going to, thing we're going to do is we're going to take this little seam allowance that we gave ourselves and we're going to fold it in on itself and just pin it in place. It's going to act as extra security, it's going to add some strength to this spot. Now be careful, there's a lot of layers to pin through. This is where I tend to pin myself or the table to what I'm working on. Uh, blood does not wash out of white linen easily. Now for the top part here we're just gonna press that to the side 
and fold it in on itself. You see we have this little thing here at the bottom of the underarm go, I'm just going to fold that in on itself as well. Again that's going to add some strength. And we're going to do the same to the other side. So it's basically like we've felt the seams before only with one seam allowance instead of two. When we get to the gore, I've cut away some of the outer seam allowance and I'm now covering it with the gore seam allowance. Covering all raw edges and pinning in place. Make sure you only pin, uh, that you don't get any puckers or that you pin too fine on the fabric. And we stitch it in place, the same stitch. When you get to the top of the gore, you're going to want to stitch, to make a few stitches securing uh, that seam allowance on the tip to the seam allowance beneath it just to make sure it lies flat and, uh, and gets that extra strength. So just some nice stitches that don't have to be very small at this point. You're only stitching through seam allowances. Now you can just stitch around and down and do these seams towards the end, but I'm just going to go up and uh, and sew these and then down on the other side. And this is what you end up with. And as you can see, it's fairly nice, it's flat, it's neat, it's not going to bother me when I'm wearing it. Now we're going to cut the neckline. I've tried it on, I've made sure I'm happy with it. I'm just following the pencil lines we drew earlier. It's not the ideal fabric scissor, but it works. To make the drawstring casing at the top of the neckline, you just fold the raw edge in twice. And this can be quite small, but not so small that you can't push a bodkin or a safety pin with a ribbon or a, some sort of braid through it. And we just stitch it down with my favourite stitch. We need to make some eyelets for the drawstring to go through. So we're doing this the same way we did on the sleeves, using my awl here to make a hole. And I'm actually going to use a knitting needle as well, just to enlarge on that hole a little bit with something a bit sharper. And making sure also that you're only going through one layer. You can see here, the fabric's so thin, you can see you're only going through one layer. That's very important. And finally going in with my preen, enlarging it as much as possible. And then it's the same drill of going in making whip stitches, as many as or as few as you like. You do not need a lot for this eyelet to stay open. And when you're done, just go back in with your your preen, your all your knitting needle, whatever works for you, whatever you have at hand, and just enlarging those holes a bit. And they're good. Finally, just even off the hem, make the same stitches and uh, the dress, the chemise, is done. Now, do you remember the ruffles I planned to make? I actually ended up not using them, but they won't be wasted, I'll make a tucker for them later. I just changed my mind. And then finally, I took my new chemise, my underwear, out into the forest on a very cold but snow-free February day to model it for you. It's so comfortable. However, word of advice, dancing in 18th century shoes in the mud, not the best idea. If you watch the video to the end, you'll see. This is how the uh, pieced side gore ended up looking. And it's quite nice, as you can see. It's uh, it's quite flat 
and uh, comfortable. It doesn't itch. Uh, it's comfortable to wear around the stays. And as you can see, these are not big gauze, but they still add quite a lot of width to the hem without adding bulk to the chest area. And this is the pieced underarm gore, which is also very flat and comfortable and neat. My sleeves ended up looking like this. Um, I used the same ribbon for the drawstring around the uh, neckline, but I didn't film inserting that. All in all, I'm very happy with my chemise. And I'm going to show you other ways of using this pattern, like this one. This is a working woman, Norwegian working woman's outfit from around 1900, and the shirt, the blouse, is made using the same pattern. I have lengthened the sleeves but kept the cuffs, and I've also added these little tucks or pleats to the uh, upper arms to make them look nicer. And I've also added a collar. Uh, and I have made it using basically the same method as we used for the cuffs. And of course it should be closed with a button or hook and eye, but I would never wear it closed when I'm working anyway. This is a different look. This is my Viking outfit. And I've used the same pattern for my blue linen underdress. It's just been lengthened. And uh, I have uh, changed the neckline a bit. It's uh, deeper and a different shape. And it's got no drawstring. It's just... Uh, and the, the sleeves have no cuffs, the neckline and the sleeves have just been had the raw edges folded in twice and uh, sewn. This is my mid-13th century man's outfit and it should I should be wearing it with a linen shirt underneath, I'm sorry. It's got the same side gores but they start lower down and it's got the same sleeves as the viking dress. But this one's also got triangular gores in the back and front. Now this is a riding tunic so these are open but you can sew them close as well if you just want a bit of extra width. So that's my chemise or uh, shift or undergarment done. It uh, cost me no money because I used the linen scraps from my stash and it took me about 25 hours. But you can do some of the seams, especially the long seams on the machine and it will take you a lot shorter. Uh, so that's all for me for now from this cold Norwegian February forest. Uh, I will see you later.